essay. It's a personal essay. Welcome to my childhood. <laughs> it relates, I promise, I promise you guys. Uh, towards the end of her life, my grandmother had very few pleasures afforded to her, um, doing a crossword puddle, puzzle, watching repeats of her favorite telenovela, or being freed from the kitchen after making the last meal of the day, collected into brief moments of quiet joy. During the summers, I would stay with her throughout the week in days long spurts. She waited for me to wake up uh, with the bathroom looking something like a Catholic church. The artificial avocado green hair mask mixed in one of the kitchen bowls, expensive shampoo and conditioner that was an indulgence solely for me, and enough combs to craft a crown. I was always unwilling. My textured hair was the burden of not only me, but my mother, my grandmother, my other grandmother, the woman at the salon who deemed my hair unceremoniously as difficult. Spurned by my negligence, my hair tangled and fell onto my back. Yes, on my back, I had very long hair as a child and I hated it, like down to here. Just imagine, very long. Nobody wanted to take care of it. I had no desire to put the time into something I had an aversion for, but my grandmother diligently tipped my head in the tub and went to work. Dominican women, notorious for their attention to detail when preparing hair to be seared into submission, are not often seen with their natural hair. My grandmother was the one exception among, among the women in my family. She cared for my hair as if she were caring for her own, which had always been cropped into a style resembling a bonnet. The only way she could have tolerated the labor of fixing my hair was if she loved it like it was her own. The same year she passed away, I took the salon my mother went to and saturated my hair with protein to encourage straightness. Side note, I regret this deeply. This began a painful affair rooted in middle school insecurities and my living in a predominantly white neighborhood. The blow dryer was ever wrapped around one wrist with the flat iron shackled to the other. In a way, it was assimilation in a culture I wanted nothing to be a part of. I had spent my teenage years rejecting the island that had given, me, given my family and me by proxy everything. The notion of a first generation kid revering the motherland felt like a betrayal. I wanted assimilation on my own terms, like the girls at my high school had agency over their clothes and their blonde highlights. Wasn't it a form of freedom to not feel like the other? Only slightly different, a variation no one could really point, pinpoint. At that point, and for years later, ethnic ambiguity became the essence that drove my identity. It was like a superpower with humanistic consequences. I would be stopped at the grocery store and asked where I was from, which sparked a small conversation and an empathy for immigrants and first generation kids that I was too naive at the time to notice. The re-embracing of my hair didn't feel like a celebration. It felt much like a clumsy death where I not only had to deal with the ramshackle mess on top of my head, but also had to learn what nourishment meant. I decided in January of 2017, a mere few months after the election of Donald Trump, that I was done hiding behind a veil of performativity. Perhaps subconsciously these two events did coincide. There was a renewed wave of reclamation of all kinds in the following months of language, of skin, of hair. One of my favorite things to mindlessly do on the internet is to watch Cardi B yop on her Instagram story, bare-faced and unflat ironed hair, black and reverent in, the, in a halo the way it frames her face, um, in a kind of subtle affirmation I wish I had when I was a teenager. Watching Amara La Negra pointedly defend her Afro-Latinidad on love and hip-hop both made my inside somersault and wonder if this would have made me stop straightening my hair ages before I denoted the blow dryer to a lowly bathroom decoration. There they were, these women that simply by existing challenged my sensibilities and my own shyness. In a different reality, I imagined meeting them, asking what part of the island their families were from, musing over whose cousin knows who, um, musing over the possibility that we were possibly related. Um, I've imagined the scenario enough to have perfected the tone of my voice when I declared that the Dominican Republic is such a small place. Everybody knows everybody else's business, where they shop for their clothes, how they wear their hair, Cardi and Amara enthusiastically nod their heads in agreement. Si, coño, ellos saben de todo. I noticed that I still cautiously put my hair behind my ear when talking to someone new as if it's about to jump out and touch them. I'll repeat this scolding motion more than a few times throughout a conversation, alternating with petting my bangs away from my eyes and fluffing it all forward in a fretful dichotomy of order and intimidation. My body is undecided if I want to shrink or puff my chest out like a curly feathered bird. Even this small form of resistance makes me wonder if I should go back to straightening my hair so boys will think I'm pretty again, or relish the strange joy of being asked if my hair really grows out of my head like that. That's happened multiple times, it's really weird, like people have never seen curly hair before. 
One kid that I babysit asked me if I curled my hair every day. And I told her, child, no, that takes so much time. As an ex once exclaimed that upon first seeing my natural hair for probably the first time, it was the most Latin he had ever seen me. It's a curious identifier that has eradicated any ethnic ambiguity I held. I walk into the local downtown coffee shop and I am a spiraling brown mass. I see a picture from an immigrant detention camp where children sleep with aluminum foil blankets and I'm still a spiraling brown mass. The ICE detention centers in South Florida further turned into a spiraling brown mass. And just as suddenly as I was ready to shrink away, my Dominican accent that only shows up when I'm pissed the fuck off <laughs> flies out of my mouth without stumbling over my own tongue, untethered by respectability politics. Thank you.